flow again into it is see I'm gonna get these 33 done in my t in the time limit so I have another narcissism topic I want to discuss about and this is in regard to what I describe as the gatekeeper narcissist and before I get into it link below donate the same you if you've listened to any of my videos I've uploaded this month you know the deal donate by tomorrow so the gatekeeper narcissist now what is a gatekeeper narcissist a gatekeeper narcissist is most likely encountered in your working life and it'll be somebody with either superiority to your title or seniority to you that gets off on taking advantage of and exploiting people at work you know they usually derive pleasure from it they in my opinion a lot of times exhibit sociopathic tendencies they feel that that there's a double standard for them that the rules don't apply for them they feel like they're untouchable they treat that profession as if it was their club a lot of times these type of narcissists will owe their success to nepotism and or cronyism and they'll act as if you know they do it all like they're the greatest that's ever been in that profession and you know a lot of this describes my abuser in the fire academy as well now the things that gatekeeper narcissists will do is they'll typically target somebody that they feel doesn't belong in their club as they see it and they'll do everything in their power to sabotage that person's career you know either by sabotaging their work performance try to make them look bad in front of others uh, speak bad about them behind their back of course try to get them to quit in that manner try to get them to do things that they're uncomfortable with that they shouldn't have to do but make them feel like they have to do it and can't say no or they'll lose you know that oh so important job you know and I'm not just talking about my experience like stuff like that you know a great example right now would be with the Me Too movement how many female actors have you know told their story where they were basically told they had to perform nude scenes or if they didn't they would lose their role and this is typically early in their career they would lose that role and thus lose their career you know that would be an example of a gatekeeper narcissist and again my experience in Arlington is definitely a, an example of a gatekeeper narcissist so the gatekeeper gets off on degrading other people in the workplace they uh, they they're very power hungry they become drunk with power they get off on wielding power over others and holding people in that position where they feel they can't say no to what they're telling you to do to where they feel they can't go to anybody else and report the actions of this person because the gatekeeper will instill um, a sense of fear in their target they'll more often than not cause the individual they're targeting to doubt their own abilities or their own you know worthiness of being in the position the target will often often exhibit signs of imposter syndrome and start questioning their own abilities you know the gatekeeper will make that person feel like they can't do anything right and that they should just give up and don't belong there so with all that combined that starts the way on the on the target and also the gatekeeper will is very tactful with what they say to the person and how they'll make sure that when they're degrading you when they're saying stuff that's blatantly over the line they'll ensure that nobody else is around to witness it they'll often speak in coded language in front of others they'll take every opportunity to call you out and degrade you over every little perceived uh, moment of misconduct in front of others in an effort to try to turn your peers against you and to instill in everybody around you that the target does not belong in that profession because the gatekeeper narcissist says so uh, in addition they'll also try to twist your words 
take things you say out of context and use it against you. And if they can get you to a point where you have to go before a superior, they'll often use lies of omission and say they don't recall something. Or they'll tell half-truths, particularly in an environment if the gatekeeper narcissist and their superior are close. And if the superior of the gatekeeper narcissist takes everything the gatekeeper says as truth without question, and in some instances may or may not even let the target speak to defend themselves. So, you know, uh, you're automatically, as the target, assumed guilty, and sometimes in some situations you're not even given the opportunity to even try to convince the superior or the gatekeeper of your innocence. And these tactics take time. You know, the gatekeeper narcissist plays the long game. They they know that you know eventually that it's the overloading takes time and that they'll eventually like weigh you down until they feel that you're about to break and if you ever start to like overcome that that's when they'll just turn up the heat now being a target of a gatekeeper narcissist also affects those around you like co-workers you may be close with will, will more often than not become secondary targets and the gatekeeper will try to instill in them the feeling that, hey, if you stand up for this person, if you try to report me, you're all going to face retaliation and I'm untouchable. So, you know, you better let me run him out of here or you're going to have problems. Like I said, this is usually in, in environments where the gatekeeper holds some form of authority or power over their target or targets. Common in a lot of professions, you know, particularly professions that are known to have a lot of nepotism and cronyism involved where friends are able to get friends hired and, you know, industries where it is not uncommon to see multiple generations of people within the same organization. This is, you know, gatekeeper narcissists love the good old boys network. That's usually what they use to protect them. They fear change. They fear having to compete with other people on an equal playing field because deep down they know that it's their connections, be it friends or family, that helped get them in the position they're in now. And without that, those advantages, they probably not would be in the position they are now. But their, their egos, you know, they have to protect that. They have to protect that system that allows them to have double standards and get away with things that others don't because if they were treated like everybody else and solely judged on their own merit and actions then they would most likely have some problems so they'll often target people uh, who are charismatic who people are drawn to as natural leaders that's us INFJs and especially ENFJs and those that are not afraid to speak up and defend others us again and those that are agents of change, always trying to make a situation better and adapt with the times to make it better for all. Again, that's us again. So, more often than not, in a workplace environment, an INFJ or an ENFJ, especially early in their careers when you're not established and you're trying to establish yourself in your dream career, will more likely than not become the target of a gatekeeper narcissist narcissist if indeed one is present in that organization and this will usually begin soon the gatekeeper usually picks a target very early into uh meeting the target in my opinion like they'll just have this basically preconceived notion of you and they'll judge you on that accordingly regardless of your performance or your actions or anything like that whatever that impression that they initially have of you that's forever who you're going to be in their eyes even if you you know you go out of your way to try to please them ENFJs pay attention you can't please them then that opinion still won't change you know you'll they'll make you feel like you can't do anything right even if you know you pay attention to all their idiosyncrasies and try to abide by their messed up rules They'll often contradict themselves. The only consistent thing is that in their mind, you don't belong there and they have every right to run you out. They truly believe that they have the authority to do that. They, To me, it seems like they 
they believe they're like the keepers of of tradition and that they're doing this to make sure everything stays the same and make sure nobody who could potentially rock the boat gains any traction so in a workplace environment always beware of the gatekeeper narcissist if you feel like you're being targeted by one the thing that i would recommend is talk to those around you and ask around to see if people are seeing the same things you're seeing and more often than not they are and after a while if it gets worse and worse those people are willing to speak up but speak up sooner rather than later before that person gets in your head and speak up sooner rather than later before the gatekeeper instills a sense of fear in the in those around you that there will be retaliation if you speak up and a lot of times these people will seemingly uh, be protected and there will be no uh, ramifications for them for their actions or their retaliation. Now again, this video is just my opinion and insights. It's an amalgamation on my own experiences, various ones, and also similar stories I've read by multiple other people in multiple other, other industries. It's just my opinion and the patterns I've seen in my experiences and in these stories I read. So this is not an official statement of any event it is you know just my opinion on how how and why some people target certain people in various professional organizations so it's for entertainment if it helped if this makes sense to you if you've been in this situation hopefully this will uh, give you some insight into how to deal with that situation so remember never sell out your integrity always trust your intuition Donate to same you today, and I'll see you next time.